I, I'm an elected official from Greenville County, South Carolina. I'm a county councilman. Uh, Greenville County is the largest county in the state population-wise and one of the largest area-wise. About uh, almost 500,000 people in the county. Um, I'm one of 12 county council members. So we come from single member districts, so about 40,000 people elect me every four years. I've been uh, elected and reelected twice. I've, I, this is I'm I'm in I'm I'm on my I'm finishing up my ninth year as a county council member. And again, that's the bottom rung of the totem pole in terms of weight government works uh, naturally. But um, I serve on the uh, Greenville Pickens Area Transportation Study Committee, which is a MPO for, uh, for our area, Greenville and Pickens County. And uh, I want to tell you, I understand exactly what he's saying when he doesn't have money to work with, because you have less money today than you had a number of years ago in, in, in today's dollars, it's less than you had in 19 and 2000 dollars or whatever. So uh, it is a challenge and um, let's see now, is there a clicker right there? Okay. So I, I really wanted to begin with a thank you. I said this is like a fraternity. I want to thank you for your individual and collective efforts to move PRT, ATN, pod cars forward. Whatever term you call it, it's an exciting group. And I want to thank you for encouraging and advising and correcting and including a good old boy from South Carolina. <laughs> I know you all can hardly tell from my accent. You're, you're wondering maybe if I'm from Boston. <laughs> but I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm from South Carolina, and uh, so I, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. And I want to ask you, do, what goal motivates you or any community to action? And I want to tell you, it's a clue. It's like a FM radio station. It's WIIFM. What's in it for me? <laughs> and um, so the what's in it for me journey at for Greenville has been has involved a lot of individuals and I, 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 I woke up this morning at uh, 730 South Carolina time which was 430 California time and uh, with these names on my mind and I want to just share this because one of the guys that involved me and challenged me as a count new county council member relatively new to start thinking about changing the transportation structure in, in Greenville. His name is John. I'm not going to go into last names. Some of you will know the names here. But uh, one was a research professor at Clemson University named Joachim Tiber. I'm going to tell you some last names. Big thinkers, John Warner. Joachim Tiber, a technology promoter, is Brad Van Meter. Uh, he works for a company that's very interested in uh, energy. Now let me back up to research professors. How many people here are in education? So we got several educators here. And how many of you, um, you have, how many of you are in, you work for the federal government but you're involved in grants, either selling grants or advising people, consulting, how many of you raise your hand for that? So let me tell you, when people are dependent on grants, as uh, Mr. Guo Wei said earlier today, they are very compartmentalized on what they are interested in doing. If there's no money in it for them, they're going to bail out pretty quickly. So what's in it for me? If you're a research professor and there's no research money involved, thank you, good day. I'm moving on to something that I can get. So a technology promoter, this is a guy who sells uh, heating and air conditioning units. I won't tell you his company, but you know, what's he interested in? Energy conservation, are there grants to save money? If he can create something where he saves you money and you can use his um, uh, equipment and pay it off, they'll guarantee you the savings. So it's a great idea, and but that's what he's interested in. Media reporters, for them it's a story, and we've had some good ones in Greenville who've written stories. That NPR story that was written several months ago, NPR researched out about three months. I was very disappointed in the results because if you listen to it, it's like it's a great opportunity, but its time may have come and gone. Let me tell you, its time is not come and gone. PRT is still a very viable option, and Ron Swenson will tell you, the solutions for mobility problems are not on the ground. That's where the congestion is. The solutions for mobility problems are 
in the third dimension. They're elevated. There you go. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so I, I will tell you, you got to understand that when media people write stories, they may be for you, but they will go out and interview, they'll find somebody who takes an opposite view and report that as well. Now, it may be a person who doesn't have an academic degree, doesn't have a clue, whatever. And let me tell you, some of the worst people are probably academicians. Ac you just said that one of the problems that you had is the planners and actually the federal government bureaucrats who control the silos that things are in, you can't spend money in your MPO for something related to ATN PRT. Why? It doesn't fit the definition. And if you don't have it on the list, and I've been on the, the Greenville MPO, it's hard for me to get our projects even considered because it's like, oh no, we don't think that'll qualify. We've got to re-educate people. And again, I'm, I was thrilled to hear uh, Mr. Guo Wei this morning uh, say, we got to get out of those silos, we've got to break down some of them. So anyway, I don't, I'm taking way too long here. But So corporate validators, we had some people, we had a group of about 15 people representing the local hospital system, the local airport, the local school district, who came in and said, you know, we think we see some applications. Now, I was glad they sent me the people who are human service oriented people in their community, the, corp the community oriented people, because those people see better than anybody the potential for this. Uh, a teaching professor at a research at a small private um, liberal arts university in Greenville, last year a group of about 10 or 12 of their students took a golf cart, an electric golf cart, automated it in three months with $5,000 of off-the-shelf technology so that it will, it will uh, drive itself. You got a switch, you can either automated driving or manual driving on the steering wheel. It, it accelerates itself and it brakes itself. It has a uh, an emergency stop button on it. They, they are very, and these are undergraduate students, $5,000 worth of equipment and 1,500 hours of student time, a lot of student time. They demonstrated that. They got the vehicle in September of 2014. They demonstrated it in December of 2011. And in J June the 1st, they demonstrated it in Washington, D.C. at the, uh, um, the, NIST-sponsored Global Cities Team Challenge, GCTC they call it. It's a wonderful group of people who are interested in the Internet of Things and smart city approaches and this kind of thing. But they were interested in having us come and they actually paid for us to bring it up, the vehicle up to, to uh, D.C. so that we could demonstrate it out there. And there were people who rode it and were flabbergasted. We were interviewed, the, the people who brought that vehicle and ran it, and, and uh, people from Korean Broadcasting Network did a special. Actually, I think they featured it in uh, in two different segments um, with different emphases. So um, I'm I'm uh, going way too much detail here, but this teaching professor made a huge difference in the lives of his students, but also in automated technology in Greenville. People began to see it and to believe it. What they are doing is like what Google is doing here in Mountain View, and the difference is millions or maybe billions of dollars in terms of investment. So we intend, let me move on. So the political advocate was me, okay? Uh, and I want to tell you, you need to understand my personal background is I believe that there is a divine creator, that there is a heavenly father, and, and, and that he guides me, he created me, he sustains me every day, and he has a plan for my life. So the, the fact that I've met so many of you in this room, the, those meetings you may have thought were chance accidents. I probably thought when it happened it was an accident, but I believe it was providential. They were divine appointments. And let me just move on and say there are industry experts, people like Mike Lester and Robert, uh, Robert with two get there. Lomas, Lomas yeah, uh, Loman. 
And, uh, and then the fraternity of experts, Peter and Dr. Ed and Martin uh, Lawson, I was fortunate enough to meet him about two weeks before he died. My wife and I were over in England and got to meet him and, and ride in their vehicle. It's a wonderful experience. And I want to just recognize my wife and thank her for coming out here for me and putting up with me for 52 years. <laughs> now, thank you. I think there may be another line down there, but I put too much on there. But I want to, I'm a fan of, of uh, the seven habits of highly effective people, and one of those is begin with the end in mind. So here's a, I'm, the end for me, if I don't say anything else when I run out of time, I have two predictions for Greenville for 2016. Number one, Greenville will deploy a fleet of LSEVs, low speed electric vehicles. It will, they, we intend to phase them. Phase one would be a connected LSEV on a campus or on, on our Swamp Rabbit Trail. I'll tell you more about the Swamp Rabbit Trail in a little bit, but it's a hiking, walking path that we hope to develop in the next few months. Phase two is going to be an assisted LSEV. Now, connected means there's a GPS signal that comes in. The, the company that's interested in working with us on this is Club Car, and they have a vehicle called the Precedent I-3 that again, they call it connected. And if you are a golfer, and I'm a duffer, I play with my son and grandson only because it gives me an opportunity for fellowship with them. I'm not good at hitting it, but some people, if, they are, if they've hit their ball and they want to know where the ball is compared to where the hole is, this vehicle will tell them that. It's 142.3 feet from where that ball is to the center of the cup, and if you hit this iron or whatever, you'll get there. For me, that's a guess, but um, they, that's a connected vehicle. It's, it's almost semi-autonomous. If the golf course superintendent says cart path only today, you cannot drive it off the cart path. That's sort of like driving on a cart pathway, right? I mean, so anyway, next is assisted. Assisted may mean Somebody drives it to where a, a user is, or they're parked where users are located at a corporate location or something like that, and they drive it around uh, physically, and then later uh, it can drive itself back to a station for servicing or something like that. Uh, it would be an unmanned vehicle returning to the station. And then phase three might be it's completely automated, an A-taxi shuttle service, where if I live in a community like Verde, and I, I don't want to use my car today to get to the mobility hub, I call, call it on my phone, it comes and picks me up, and it takes me to where I want to go. From where I live to where I workshop, live, dine, or play, or, or to my transportation hub. That's the shuttle. That's solving the first mile, last mile solution, and I think that needs to happen. I think it will happen. It will start in 2016 in Greenville. Now, my second prediction is in 2016, Greenville will extend an RFP for a PRT ATN system, one at the GSP airport, Greenville Spartanburg Airport, and secondly, on the Greenville County Economic Development Corporation corridor. I happen to, that's a, that's a public benefit organization founded by the County to own a railroad, which the county, the 1895 Constitution of South Carolina prohibits counties from owning railroad properties. So we were created to own the railroad and, uh, but, and to use it to leverage for transportation improvements and economic development. And for the last couple of years, we've been working really hard to do that. So I believe that we issued one last year. We had a couple of glitches in our, in our RFP. We're, gonna, we're revising that now, and we're going to reissue it so that either on our corridor or um, on the Swamp Rabbit Trail or on a downtown loop or some other, we're going to have um, uh, a competition for that RFP. Now, here's my question. Uh, we need to frame the discussion about the results that we want. What, what is it that automated transportation helps us do? I mean, why do we really want it? Let me tell you this. Last year, my understanding is that um, Lowe's stores, is that there, are they out here in California? Um, 
they sold over a half million quarter-inch drills, and nobody that bought one actually wanted a quarter-inch drill. You know what they wanted? A quarter-inch hole. So we need to ask what's the ultimate result, and we need to recognize if somebody's going to help us get to an ultimate goal, we need to work with those people. So the, I have redefined transit-oriented uh, development to Green Villages development. That's what I refer to it as in Greenville, South Carolina. It works in any community, but especially works in Greenville. So Green Villages development, can they reduce potential barriers to podcar projects? Well, what are the barriers to podcar projects and to automated transport? Technology is one barrier. Uh, a friend of mine who is a developer was in an airport and waiting on the, a plane to arrive, and he was talking to a pilot, and he was talking to him about what he did, and, and the pilot said, you know, Phil, what makes planes fly? And Phil said, well, you know, I think it's a matter of thrust and lift, and he was trying to explain that, and the pilot said, it's money. If you have enough money, you can make anything fly. <laughs> so the technology, let me tell you, the technology is here. The technology is flying. It's flying at Heathrow. It's at Morgantown. It's been operating there for 40 years. It's operated safely for 40 years. Over 80 million miles, a friend of mine from California told me they had done some calculations. It's a nine mile track that connects the downtown city part of the campus with an, an up on the mountaintop uh, medical campus and a couple of other things. Nine miles long round trip, over 80 million miles in the last 40 years with guess how many traffic accidents? Zero. So if the transportation community wants more safety, let's do PRT. As a matter of fact, why is the re what is the reason for that? They're grade separated. They, they can't run into another vehicle. So anyway, technology, let's assume that's there, the market need. My friend John Warner, who's one of those, the big thinker, he challenges me, says, look, Fred, what you have is a technology that's looking for a need. You don't have a need here in Greenville for transportation. Uh, we don't have congestion that's as bad as it is in Southern California or in D.C. or New York. We don't have those kind of things. So I think you're, you're you, you know, you, you haven't shown me a market need. I think we've identified a market need, and I'll tell you who identified the needs in Greenville. The best need is at GSP Airport. Now, GSP Airport... And, and uh, I can, I'll say a little bit more about that later. But anyway, there are needs in every community. Ithaca showed the needs in Ithaca, and that's, that's the point. A small community like Ithaca, a fifth the size of Greenville, actually your city is about the same size as the city of Greenville, but the county is not as big as Greenville County. But anyway, so the business case is, is very important, and financing and repayment is important. As a matter of fact, some people would say it's the most important thing. You've got to have money, and you've got to be able to show how you're going to repay it. You've got to show how you're going to finance. You've got to show how you repay it. So I've got money in refinancing on here three times. And again, I think my, my slides are cut off here. I don't know how to get, it, get the bottom, scroll it up, but it sort of doesn't matter. Um, I, the, the business case is important. And uh, human factors, I believe, are the biggest challenge. How do we get people out of their cars and into something that they choose to ride? Again, Mr. Uh, Guo Wei said today, the, uh, he had three C's. Help me, Mr. Are you here? Help me. What, are your, what, are your, what were your three things? Activity, choice, and you actually said one C, but I, mine is so connectivity, choice, and agility, you got to connect the right places and, and people, if the problem with buses as a solution is they don't connect people from where they live to where they work. They, they have to walk a half mile or whatever to get to the bus station and, and when they get to the final station they got to walk a half mile to get to where they work or shop. So it doesn't fit their needs. It doesn't come in a timely manner. So it doesn't give them enough choices. So our solutions in Greenville have always been multimodal. We're not trying to get rid of anything that's here. We're trying to solve um, the total solution, which is choice and uh, agility, ability to do it in an easy manner. Now, yesterday, my wife and I 
flew from Charlotte, North Carolina to San Francisco. Same, same situation as flying from D.C. One stop, that appealed to us, and uh, my wife wanted to take a taxi. I wanted to do it cheap, okay? I probably lost because here's what I did. Number one, I took the all train. We walked to the all train station in the airport, and it did a very good job and didn't cost us anything to get to BART. Well, once we got on the BART, we of course paid for BART. We had to try to figure it out. We're from South Carolina, you don't necessarily use those machines all the time. So we, but together we figured it out. My wife, I can tell you, probably is the one that helped me. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we bought our tickets. When we got on, it had to take us to the next stop up and we transferred to another BART so we could go south. I, that's okay, I understand that. It's a temporary kind of a thing. But let me tell you, that was, so let's see, we moved from the plane to the all, um, train to the BART 1 to BART 2, then we had to go up across a bridge from that station and down to another Caltrain station, buy a Caltrain ticket, and, and start southward. Well, so Caltrain. We got all the way to San Jose, which is where we wanted to be for the afternoon last night, and, uh, but we had to take a taxi then home. So there was a lot of transfers. You talk about agility. I think we had it. We had to be agile to get there. <laughs> uh, but so uh, now the biggest challenge is existing technology. Again, I am so pleased to hear Mr. Guang Wei um, say that if you ask a transit agency to support PRT, their question is, does it help my ridership or does it hurt it? So the point is, there's uh, there's a need for us to solve the uh, the human factors and I'm, I'm sorry existing technology factors because they they see the potential loss of jobs or loss of whatever they, their expertise and they don't want that they want to be replaced we got to find a way to finance it uh, let me move on so here's what Greenville did five years ago in our imagining our future concept we our our uh, concept shows Greenville County centers corridors and uh, communities as planning principles centers focus mixed use development corridors connect them and the communities are the surrounding areas you can see that and then we own a formal railroad corridor that Greenville County does GCDC does this, and the red line is that corridor. The line to the left that you can see is a Lawrence Road. It's parallel to Lawrence Road. The distance there is from, it actually crosses at some point, but it's 100 to 300 yards away from the highway. It's really the Lawrence Road corridor there. And, and, and so let me show you some, uh, this is a map, maybe a little bit clearer and easier to read of Lawrence Road and our former railroad corridor. And we ask you to imagine that road creating new developments between Greenville, which is the blue line up at the top of the map, and down in the lower right hand corner of the map. Now here's some possible mobility hubs. There was a study done in 2014 by Peter Miller, who's one of our um, fraternity brothers here who uh, he said there's I think 13 or 15 hubs that he identified as possibilities either on Lawrence Road or on the Swamp Rabbit Trail as ideal places for people to live, work, shop, or play. And uh, the, the inner circle is a quarter of a mile distance and the outer circle is a half mile radius. So, um, so Greenville Economic Development Green Villages economic development. When I say Green Villages, you you have in your own mind a concept of what we're talking about here. They're green, attractive, livable, sustainable, walkable, and they're connected. They're multimodal connected. Uh, they're they're intentional. They're based on planning principles. They're innovative, involving public and private partnerships. It needs community-wide leadership, and Green Villages development is more attractive and sounding and attracting support than transit-oriented development is, or even transit-oriented economic development. So there's a new mindset. Our solution in Greenville is for innovative public-private partnerships. The mindset is that there's a weak federal and state 
system. They don't have enough money. They have too many issues. It's too complicated. They, they're not offering solutions today. Uh, you have strong cities and counties, and they have to come up with their own solutions. I believe Greenville has to. I believe Mountain View has to, or Santa Cruz, or any of the other communities here. So the way we do it is a couple of stages of public support, and then private support, and then public on the back end. On the front end, we provide public right-of-way and infrastructure. Sewer is deteriorating just like highways are. So we need to replace sewer in these corridors of development. Then public planning regulations need to support and accommodate. We need to have, allow greater densities and lower parking requirements and those kind of things. The other thing is um, the privatization in they design, build, and operate. And then on the back end, what we d uh, intend to do is to provide a TIF-like financing structure called multi-county industrial and business parks specific to Greenville to South Carolina. And um, it will generate money based off of increased value of properties and tax collections. So here's a, a, a revitalization opportunity that was designed by some Clemson students. And here are some potential um, ATM routes in Greenville. The cluster up in the upper left is downtown Greenville. The purple uh, portion, the circuit, circle part of the purple, is about one mile total, and it would con connect several things, and then several hospitals. So anyway, we got some designs there. Um, uh, I think uh, this is an example of Verde and an opportunity where we're going to develop that uh, the uh, automated taxi uh, dissemination and that's where we're going to collect people. Uh, we'll have stations there for uh, ATN in a couple of years. So uh, plans for Verde go back to 2006. The blue marker there says they plan for a uh, a, uh, on, an, an online station, and they're fulfilling that now. Here's an example of the enclave at Lawrence Village, uh, where the gentleman is uh, uh, proposing uh, rental units, but also office and retail and anchor restaurant space. That's a 10-acre track of land, and he's donating 1.2 acres to give us access to the roadway up there. So that's enough. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be with you today.